Today we're gonna be ranking the Akatsuki in terms of strength, and I know everyone their aunts have done a video like this on YouTube, but this is actually gonna be the correct way of ranking the Akatsuki, and not the incorrect way you're gonna see around YouTube. Now all jokes aside, subscribe to this channel if you enjoy this type of content, and let me just remind you that this isn't necessarily a list of who would win against every other member of the Akatsuki and more of an overall strength analysis. Also no filler characters, I'm just gonna be ranking the 10 core members in Shippuden because that's the Akatsuki as far as I'm concerned. Number 10, the weakest member of the Akatsuki is Hidan. It's very simple really. He says it himself that he is the slowest member of the Akatsuki, his moves are not very elaborate, he is also the stupidest member of the Akatsuki and being dumb in a Naruto battle isn't something that's gonna help him out quite a lot. He's also very much a one-trick pony he has one jutsu, granted it is a very powerful jutsu, if you get caught in it you die, but if you know how to avoid the jutsu it's pretty easy to handle. Also the jutsu itself has some very specific requirements that may be difficult to attain in the middle of a fight, and any ninja with a mid-tier defensive jutsu would be able to absolutely negate Hidan's attacks and therefore he wouldn't be able to draw any blood. Hidan lost lost to team Asuma when he was fighting with Shikamaru and Izumo and Kotetsu and then Kakuzu had to come in and just assemble him back together essentially and they didn't really have intel in that fight so it's not as though it's impossible to deal with Hidan's jutsu and then he was soloed by Shikamaru in a pretty spectacular fashion and sure that Shikamaru had prep time but Shikamaru isn't beating anyone else in the Akatsuki with all the prep time in the world I'm sorry but that's just the truth and a lot of people we're gonna say, no, it's Zetsu. Zetsu is the weakest member of the Akatsuki. But let's be real here, Zetsu destroys Hidan any day of the week. And I'm gonna get to Zetsu. All right, now let's get to number nine, Kakuzu. Yes, Kakuzu is the second weakest member of the Akatsuki and many of you may be very angry right now because I am spitting facts here. And by the way, even though Kakuzu is the second weakest member of the Akatsuki, he is leagues above Hidan. So this is a pretty substantial jump in strength from the 10th to the 9th place anyway, but among everyone else, Kakuzu is the weakest. He has a powerful defensive jutsu in the stone skin, which can be countered by lightning style and just powerful jutsus such as the Ross and Shuriken. He has five lives, which is something good for him, but we see that they can be taken out rather quickly, and he seems to be better than Kakashi at Taijutsu. And a lot of people cite that fight against Kakashi as a magnificent feat, but beginning of Shippuden Kakashi wasn't exactly the peak of his strength. Quite the opposite, in fact. Also, it wasn't as though that fight was very fair. For a decent portion of the battle, Kakuzu had Hidan's help while he was fighting against Kakashi, and Kakashi was essentially protecting Ino and Choji, who were just completely useless in the fight, so he had some disadvantages in that fight, and Kakuzu wasn't really destroying Kakashi. Granted, he would have beaten Kakashi if Shikamaru didn't destroy one of his hearts through the little plan with Hidan's blood, but Kakashi even states that he didn't use his Mangekyo and he would have used if Naruto and the reinforcements didn't arrive and I'm pretty sure he would have beaten Kakuzu with Kamui. Can't really counter that, there's absolutely no way he can do anything against Kamui. And let's talk about Kakuzu's offensive jutsus. Well, they're just basic elemental jutsus, which are powerful, don't get me wrong, but if you want to go above a certain tier of of strength in the Naruto verse, you need more than that, and everyone else in the Akatsuki has more powerful jutsus than that, than just simple elemental jutsus. Yes, he has all of the elements, but so what? Kakashi has all of them as well, Sarutobi has all of them as well, and he's much more powerful. It's not like having every single nature transformation is gonna make you a god. But the worst thing about Kakuzu, and this is really the reason why I'm putting him in second to last place here is because he got blitzed by beginning of Shippuden Naruto twice. Two times in a row, Naruto was able to blitz Kakuzu with the Rasen Shuriken and it wasn't very difficult to see Naruto coming. Naruto used three shadow clones to distract Kakuzu before he blitzed him with the Rasen Shuriken twice. That Naruto had a very small QBF that's practically negligible and he doesn't have 
Rage Mode or anything else. That Naruto isn't very powerful aside from the Rasen Shuriken itself, which anyone else in the Akatsuki except for Hidan would easily be able to dodge. And Kakuzu failed to do so twice. The first, the Rasen Shuriken fizzled out because Naruto wasn't practiced at it, and then the second one hit and defeated Kakuzu. And I see every other Akatsuki member here, aside from Hidan, doing much better in that fight. And you can argue that Kakuzu was starred and all that, but it was actually said that Kakuzu powered up when he fused the wind and the fire hearts within himself. Of course, people are gonna come and tell me that, oh man, he fought the two tails. Wow, he fought the two tails. 12 year old Naruto fought the one tail and won. Whoa, whoa, that's such a great feat for the two tails. Number eight, Zetsu. And I'm referring to the Zetsu that was in the Akatsuki, the original black and white Zetsu. So when we discuss Zetsu's strengths, we have to take into account the powers from both the black and the white Zetsus. And most people forget the Zetsu powers, which are not weak at all, actually. Black Zetsu during the war arc, the same black Zetsu that's been throughout the entire ship era, was able to keep up with Mei, the fifth Mizukage, her guard of 20 or so Jonins, and then a KCM Naruto clone arrived and Black Zetsu was still keeping up with them. He even tripped KCM-1 Naruto and he missed the Rasen Shuriken. And we know how fast KCM-1 is, it was relative to the fourth Raikage, which was the fastest shinobi alive at the time. Black Zetsu was then only defeated by Chojuro extending his sword or whatever, and he was wasn't even killed, he was able to get away. Also, Black Zetsu has wood style and a pretty powerful wood style, which is why he was able to deal with so many ninjas at the same time and powerful ninjas at that. Can you imagine Kakuzu trying to do that? Mei was just gonna melt him like she was melting Sasuke Susano and she couldn't do much against Black Zetsu. White Zetsu, the original White Zetsu, the one that was fused with Black Zetsu for like half of the entire show, he also has some very interesting powers that people just forget for some reason. Of course, that that the white Zetsus that fought in the war weren't very powerful, but the original had the spore power, that one he used in the Five Kage Summit, that no one in the entire summit, no one could detect that. And that's a very strong jutsu, it drains the chakra from the target, and you can put it back on someone else. White Zetsu can also transform into other people, which is pretty good, especially his transformation that mimics the chakra, so you can't even tell him apart from the real person, because the chakra is the same, so now we're has to come with the bullshit power of good and whatever and feel the hatred in Zetsu, which is a, a little bit of an ass pull, but that's how it works. Zetsu is pretty powerful, man. You shouldn't downplay Zetsu. And if you want to say, oh, he destroyed Madara, I mean, Jupidara was killed by Zetsu. Come on. Yeah, it's just... If you wanna put Zetsu in first place because of that, feel free, but you don't have my respect. <laughs> Number seven, Sasori of the Red Sand. And yeah, sure, a lot of people are gonna get mad with me because I'm putting Sasori in number seven, but it's the reality. And let me explain why. Sasori is a somewhat limited ninja. He doesn't have a very powerful attack. The most dangerous thing he has is his poison, which is very deadly, but it's not the hardest thing for you to counter. Sakura was able to counter the cloud of poison with a paper bomb. Granted, if Sasori hits anyone with a the poison, they're probably gone. And if you don't have an antidote like Sakura had in the fight, I can easily see everyone else on this list that's above him being able to dodge that jutsu and high level shinobis being able to dodge the poison as well. He has the third Kazekage puppet, which has the iron sand, a pretty powerful jutsu, but it's definitely not as strong as the original when the third Kazekage was actually alive. There's just no way it's as powerful because we can clearly see that Gara's sand in the same arc is 20 times more powerful than the iron sand. Sakura is able to shrug off the iron sand kind of easily. She's just punching away at the iron blocks and all that. And Sakura in the beginning of Shippuden, sure she's not weak, but she's definitely not a powerhouse by any means. She is able to one-shot every single puppet she touches. She one-shots the Hiruko puppet, she one-shots the third Kazekage puppet, she one-shots Sasori himself puppet, and all the others that Sasori throws against her during the summoning of the 100 puppets. And you can say, yeah, sure, man, but Sakura is very strong and that's not a lie, she is powerful. But 
but honestly, everyone else on this list has more firepower than Sakura has, and they would easily be able to destroy the puppets as well. And Sakura isn't exactly very fast, and sure, for most of that fight, Shio was actually manipulating her with her chakra threads, but there are some moments in the fight that Sakura is just fighting by herself, and she is relative to Sasori's speed, and Sakura is not a speedster whatsoever. And I'm not trying to say that Sasori is weak, he's definitely strong, he's definitely Kage level, the only Akatsuki member that's not Kage level is Hidan, but Sasori is just not as powerful as the others on this list, and for those of you who are saying now that Deidara told everyone that Sasori was more powerful than him, this is just kind of disingenuous by Deidara because it's a flat out lie, and it's very much proven by feats any basic data bomb could one-shot any Sasori puppet just by comparing the blasts with the punch Sakura's throwing, they're pretty equivalent to the weakest data bombs. And if he tries the stronger bombs, like C3 that he used against the Sand Village, he's destroying every single puppet in Sasori's arsenal. At the same time. If you want to see a more in-depth data versus Sasori fight, I've made an entire video about it, and the link's gonna be in the description below if you're interested. Number six, Conan and damn man the Conan downplay in the Naruto community is just absolutely insane. Guys, Conan is very strong. I don't know why people always put him in like ninth place because she would definitely beat everyone that comes before her on this list. With that prep time, by the way, Conan's arsenal relies a lot of her paper jutsu, obviously, but that jutsu is actually pretty damn strong. She can produce blades and paper bombs out of thin air. She can clone herself, producing countless paper bomb clones that explode with an equal force to Daedara's explosions. She was able to tag Obito, and people are gonna say, oh, but Obito wasn't taking her seriously. Yeah, sure, sure, yeah, of course, Sasori and Kakuzu would definitely tag Obito if Obito wasn't taking them seriously. Yeah, I can definitely see that. But that's not all. Conan can fly, and she is the best flyer of the Akatsuki. And guys, people underestimate the power of flight in the universe that most people can't fly, and you can. You just have a mess advantage in any fight that your opponent cannot fly, especially if you're a long-range fighter like Conan is. She is also virtually immune to physical attacks because her body just turns into paper. It's like Suigetsu turning into water when he is punched. He doesn't really feel that. And it's the same thing for Conan. She just turns into paper and is not hurt so long as she has chakra left. So essentially you have to drain her out completely before you beat her. Also, she was fighting against the entire Leaf Village when they attacked with pain. She was fighting the entire Aburame clan, which is one of the most underrated clans in Naruto, and she was doing just fine. And a lot of people are gonna mention the Jiraiya fight against Conan, which was a very quick exchange, and people say, oh man, Jiraiya stomped her, but why? He spat some oil on Conan, and that's stomping her? Because look at Conan's face here. She wasn't scared at all when she was put in that position. It wasn't as though she was, oh no, Oh, Jiraiya's gonna kill me. Now, sure, she had pain backing her up, but would she have lost to a little bit of oil? Uh, I don't think she would have. <laughs> and then, of course, there is the other fight, her main fight in the series against Obito, which, as I said before, she tagged him, and it's not every character that can tag Obito. Minato could, and Conan could. You know, that may be speaking something about her powers and all that. And then, of course, she uses her most powerful jutsu in that fight, the Ocean of Paper Bombs. And if you're telling me now, oh, Oh, that was prep time, man. Doesn't matter because it's prep time. Okay, but shouldn't you include how powerful a character can be with prep time in a list talking about the power of characters? Shouldn't you include that in the equation too? You can give 13 billion years to Kakazu, and he's not gonna do anything remotely similar to what Conan did against Obito, who had to use Izanagi, which is just a cheat code in the Naruto verse to escape. Aside from Obito, the only other member of the Akatsuki that would have been able to escape that would be Daedra because he can fly. So Conan takes the sixth place, very well deserved. Number five, Daedra. I don't think people understand how strong this guy is. And he was 19 when he died. He had much more room for growth. Daedra's basic explosions are comparable to Sakura's hard punches in the beginning of Shippuden, if not more powerful. He also had much more than that. He had essentially the C3 nuke he could use to destroy an entire village with, the blast of which was comparable 
comparable to a tail beast bomb and he was dropping that pretty casually. He can also fly, which as I said before is an extremely advantageous feature in a world that most people can't. And we're not even talking about his most powerful jutsus. The C2 dragon, which can just spit very, very powerful bombs non-stop and also keep you flying away from the range of your enemies. The C4 Karure, which is a one-shot technique against anyone that doesn't fulfill three very specific conditions. Number one, having lightning style to defuse the bombs. Number two, being able to see the nanobombs coming your way. And number three, being intelligent enough to figure out how to defuse the bombs. And of course the C0, which is a suicide technique, but I think it's very valid to put it in here because it would give at least a tie for data against anyone in the Akatsuki with the exception of Obito. But his explosions are not everything Deidara has. He is also trained in countering Genjutsu, which can be useful against a lot of different fighters. He is very fast, unlike Sasori, who was being tagged by Sakura. Deidara was able to dodge Hebi Sasuke multiple times, and we know that Hebi Sasuke is one of the fastest characters in the series by that point in the story. He can also mold his bombs into shapes that will favor him during the fight, like like we saw against Gara, where he used the centipede to infiltrate into Gara's sand and explode it from within. His explosives can fly too, they can do all types of crazy things. And I was very tempted into putting him on fourth place. That's a very close call, but fourth place goes to this guy, Kisame. Kisame has the highest chakra reserves from anyone in the Akatsuki. He's the strongest water style user in the verse. He stomped Killer B, who was one of the most powerful characters we've seen by that point and Kisame can essentially drain your chakra until you die and regenerate from it if he sustains any wounds. He only lost to my guy because guy was his natural counter. If Hirudora wasn't a physical attack, guy would have died in that fight against a very fatigued Kisame. And that massive bubble ability Kisame has is just something else. Like if you don't have a teleportation jutsu or some other hack to get out of there, you're probably gonna die. And now we're moving to the class top three which I believe most people put those three in the top three because it's kind of obvious we begin with the number three which is Itachi Uchiha now I think there is a fair argument to make in favor of Itachi against either Pain or Obito and I've made versus battles videos about these two fights in the past before more in depth so I don't think that the difference especially between Itachi and Pain is that great but Itachi doesn't have have as much chakra or durability for instance and he also doesn't have the sheer hacks that Obito has when I compare him against pain I usually tend to put him in the same scenario pain was when he invaded the leaf village and I don't see Itachi doing as well as pain did in that situation of course that's because of his chakra reserves and I'm not saying Itachi has like zero chakra he has a decent amount of chakra he fought Sasuke for a very long period of time then he stomped Orochimaru kept on fighting Sasuke and all that. His chakra reserves are not low like most people want to say, but they're not as high as Nagato slash Pain's and also Obito's. And that's what actually holds him back. And as I'm using the version of the characters that are in the Akatsuki and not Edo versions and other things like that, I cannot really use Edo Itachi here. Otherwise, he'd probably be higher than that. But still, Itachi takes number three. I don't really have to explain why Itachi is powerful. Amaterasu Tsukiyomi, his Susano has the Yadamir and the Totsuka Blade. He's also the smartest character the Akatsuki by far. He's very fast. He was relative to KCM1 Naruto. So all in all, Itachi is extremely powerful. And I think there is an argument to make for Itachi against Obito and Pain. Link in the description if you're interested. Number two, Pain slash Nagato, but the Pain version is the more accurate Akatsuki version because that's what Nagato uses when he's in the Akatsuki. Pain has very powerful abilities. And also he has six different bodies, which makes fighting against him pretty complicated. The catastrophic Shinra Tensei and Chibaku Tensei are very broken abilities that hit extremely hard. He also has ninjutsu absorption. His summonings are very strong. That dog summon could solo Kakuzu without much problem. The Asura path can hit pretty hard too. He can extract people's souls and resurrect the other paths of pain. He's a very powerful guy. It's not by chance that he is the leader of the Akatsuki. Well, the quote-unquote leader because we all know the 
things that went on behind the scenes, the manipulation and all that kind of stuff. He beat Sage Mode Naruto after fighting the entire village for quite some time, and powerful shinobis at that, he fought Kakashi and killed him. He destroyed the entire village with that Shinra Tensei, and he still had gas to fight against Sage Mode Naruto and beat him. It was only because the QB came in and fought against Pain. He wouldn't have won that fight. And for number one, we have Obito, which is here essentially because of how abilities and all that. And it's not very fair to the other members of the Akatsuki because Kamui is exceptionally broken. Being able to phase through things and absorb things into the Kamui dimension is something that kind of negates most of the abilities in the verse. Obito is also very good at Genjutsu and I have to assume countering Genjutsu as well. He was able to put a perfect Jinchuriki under a Genjutsu, something that should be impossible but apparently he can. I am not the biggest Obito fan. Well, actually I like Obito when he still has his mask. I still, I have to put him in here. Out of all of the Akatsuki characters, the only one I can see maybe having a chance of beating Obito and it's not a guarantee whatsoever, that one would be Itachi. All the others would just absolutely get bodied by Obito. Even Pain. Pain even more so because his most powerful jutsus wouldn't work against Obito and Obito would be able to absorb each pain into the Kamui dimension until none is left. Of course that wouldn't really solve the problem because he would still have to go after Nagato to actually win the fight. Obito is more capable of fighting against more powerful people than any other Akatsuki member. And I'm talking about Orange Mask Obito here, which is his Akatsuki version. If we were talking about White Mask Obito or Jubito, that would be even worse for the Akatsuki. Obito is more powerful than the rest but he is still somewhat relative to the rest of the Akatsuki. It's not as though Obito is a god. We see that there are ways to fight him. Conan almost killed him. So it's not as if this guy is invincible. He himself thinks that if Itachi knew all of his secrets somehow he could have killed Obito even after he was dead and all that stuff. Let me know in the comments what you think about my ranking of the Akatsuki and I know this is the only correct ranking. If you disagree with me, you are incorrect. Subscribe to this channel and like this video to help me out. Thanks.